find to work best rather than working off this really really big piece of fabric is I'm going to take assume the width of of my ruffle and, and cut fabric strips of that width and um, so yeah as usual in most cases just a little snip and then, and then rip it so now for this depending on now how I fold and cut the ruffles usually depends on the type of pattern I'm using for the one that that um, allows me to put three circles on one of those fabric strips I find I, I, I fold it over once and then I, I, I fold like this is the entire circle so and I, I usually fold this down to have a half circle and um, and then I put this on the fold and I cut the, the very the first circle here and then the inner circle open along here and uh, well instead of just talking I might as well do it to show you so now this is what you do obviously if you don't have uh, one of those electric cutters uh, it's perfectly possible and um, yeah, I've made quite a few ruffles for dresses before I ever bought one of those electric cutters. But yeah, obviously it does take a lot longer. And so yeah, I go in here and cut cut my circle open. And um, so now you can see we've got our first piece of ruffle. And now. What you want to keep in mind, it looks actually like a fairly dense, you know, full volume ruffle. But uh, in the tail area, if we follow the curve of the ruffle, which is like this, you see that it actually loses quite a bit of volume fairly quickly. So you, if you choose a different pattern, don't use one that's kind of too loose, that's just wavy. Because if you then follow the, 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 the curve of the, of the tail, whatever you've got volume there, you're going to lose some. So you definitely want to have... A fairly full volume pattern for you for the ruffles of your butter the collar right in the front it doesn't really matter that much but then you know wherever there's a curve there and the entire tail area is like that you lose some of it so you don't want to be too skippy there on the fabric so that's number one and then with the remaining piece here I'll take whatever I've cut out here and flip fold this over right to the to the fabric edge and then I practically repeat what I've just done. So you can see I've got some some fabric left over here because my fabric is slightly wider than 150 so if that's your case you're lucky and um, so now this is going to cost a little more work because you've got four layers now but um, usually isn't much of, an, of a problem yet. So if you have a little dip here cutting, that's not a problem. Whatever you do to finish the edges, is, you'll be able to compensate this there. This is not really an overly precise science at this point. Because whatever you do here, and the same here, we go in here and open open up. These are the bits that can go. And um, so yeah, I've got my first three circles of ruffles cut. Now you repeat that another clips. For these kind of things it's sort of the same thing um, as as when it was about not mixing up life left and right side of, uh, of your pieces is follow the same patterns all the time it's like I, I, I always place down one ruffle uh, right side up and then I take the next piece and put it on top with the right side down and then turn on the machine and here you can, you know, if you have a serger, obviously you use it, 
but um, you know you could also now just place the seam with a normal straight machine here and especially if your fabric doesn't fray just leave it like that you know if you do want French seams to have really sophisticated go ahead and do it if you want to have that with the pinking chairs zigzag whatever this this seam is not going to be uh, overly visible maybe if some ruffle in the tail air flips open but um, yeah, nobody's going to be that close to kind of say, so, oh, you know, that butter's been horrible because it's got the zigzag there. So, you know, you finish it off the way you like it and the, what amount of time and effort you, you feel is justified for, you know, for the, for the task at hand. So obviously if you have a surgery, you don't have a problem. Uh, I keep going with my normal thread, three thread serge because that's not a seam that has anything uh, to, to hold, it's like, it's just to join these two pieces, nobody's ever going to pull it in, it's like, it's not something where I feel I need an extra seam to make this strong, and the normal three thread uh, overlock stitch works perfectly here, and um, so I just... Given that you've cut them using the same pattern, you won't have any problems to have this line up, and then what I do next, this one stays that I've, I, the, new, the, the piece I've put on top, I fold that towards me so the right sides are on top and then I take the next piece and put it on top. And I follow that same pattern all the way through, always. I always do it that way. And um, so you know what, what starts to, to, to pile up here I usually put like a plastic bag or, or whatever bag down the bottom here so it falls there and um, or leave it fall to the ground but it's always the same thing you know I put the right side there and then put the right side if you have one on top And I keep going. So I've got that seam the same, facing the same way all the way through. Don't really, don't really cut anything, you know, just finish off the edge until I get to, to the other end. So right, that'll take a while. And I'll see you when I'm finished and when I've reached the other end. And then I'll show you how to finish the other end. Hi, welcome back. Um, I've gone ahead and finished the inside edges of my now almost 20 meter long ruffle and the only thing left to do now is to finish the outer edge. I'm going to use a, a, a narrow rolled hem, like really quite narrow, uh, that's typically used on flamenco costumes. I'm going to go for uh, a black thread so to give a bit of contrast to the ruffles using the same color I've used for the underside of my butter de cola but um, yeah obviously that's totally up to you can you go for the same color or something contrasting um, if you have a domestic serger uh, be careful you won't get a, a quite as a tight finish as this machine will, will give you but um, yeah, it's perfectly alright, it's going to look great, and, but one thing to keep in mind, a domestic overlocker or domestic serger isn't made for that sort of volume. I very clearly remember uh, one of my first uh, large group orders where I had seven dresses with seven ruffles each to, to be finished um, in the short amount of time remaining. and. Um, and so, yeah, I went off with the domestic serger trying to finish off the edges and it's obviously quite slow. And um, after a while the thread, the needle thread kept breaking every like 20 centimeters. And it was like hugely frustrating because, you know, so you have 7 meters of ruffle. So you have like 15, 20 meters to cover for each, for each dress and, um, and you have to stop, turn off the machine and re-thread. Uh, the needle thread every like tiny little bit and yeah so what happened was the the machine was was, was starting to heat up and the needle would get hot and the thread 
just kept breaking. So yeah, be prepared that your domestic serger may not be able to pull through in one go the same way this machine does. Um, yeah, other options uh, if you don't have a serger, um, there are several options that I've got. Um, I've written about in an article on, on the blog. I put a link. If you haven't seen it, I put a link to the article below the video. Um, yeah, one of the obvious ones would be um, a bias binding, which looks really great because it also makes the makes the edge stand out a lot more. So if you use a contrasting color, it gives gives actually a really nice nice effect. One thing to keep in mind: we're talking about 20 meters of ruffles. So on the outside, you have two and a half to three times that. So you know you you'll need about 50, 60, 70, depending on the on the pattern you you've used. If you use that one, you can actually you know take the pattern and measure the outside, and then take that you know for one circle and take that multiply that by 36, and you know how much uh, bias binding you need. So that's quite considerable. So if you use a satin one and then you need like 50, 70 meters of, of that, so that adds to your cost apart from the time you spend doing it. Um, if you like to finish your, your ruffles with um, lace trim, uh, keep in mind that you need to follow the curve. So you not, even if the lace trim is like less than an inch or like two centimeters, um, it needs to be gathered a little. And there are some trims that already have a little gathering in there. So you need, you know, the same, let's say 50, 60 meters of that. Um, if you have a straight lace trim, then you by hand need to gather it a little to compensate for the, for the curve. Otherwise it sort of pulls in on uh, at the outer edge and that's not a pretty look at all. So you will need even more. So instead of 50, you will need 70 or instead of 70 you'd need 80 meters so if you if you choose one that's that's expensive just uh, be aware that that will add to the cost quite considerably although it does give a really really pretty look